Hello, and welcome back to Short Spotlight, the series where we discuss Disney animated short films. Old and new, obscure and famous, big and small. For as much as we like to say that it was all started by a mouse, there was another character that preceded Mickey. Without him, all those later cartoons might not have happened. I'm, of course, talking about Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Much has been said about him, his inception, how Disney lost him, and how they got him back again. But I feel like for as much as we talk about Oswald himself, we don't really talk about the cartoons he was in. So today, we'll be discussing one of them. Oh, what a night. If I had to pick the quintessential Oswald cartoon, it'd probably be this one. If you didn't know much about the character and wanted to watch one cartoon to understand his essence, then this is probably your best choice. It's also good representation for what Disney cartoons were like before Steamboat Willie. It's not my absolute favorite Oswald cartoon, but it's certainly up there. But what about it makes it so noteworthy? Well, let's dig into it and find out together. The year was 1927. The Walt Disney Studio had been producing the Alice comedies for a while. However, their popularity was beginning to wane, and even Walt had grown tired of the series. Meanwhile, their distributor, Charles Mintz, was looking for the next big animation star. One that they could sell to Universal, one of the biggest studios in Hollywood. They specifically wanted a character who wasn't a cat, as there were too many cartoon cats on the market. So, Mintz told Walt and Co. to find something else. So, Walt and Up Iwerks came up with a rabbit. Mintz liked the concept and signed a contract with Universal to produce 26 cartoons with him. Thus, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was born. In the first few cartoons, he was portrayed as an older man. The first Oswald cartoon produced, Poor Papa, is about him having lots of kids and no one was really happy with the character. They retooled him to make him younger and peppier, and that ended up being what the execs wanted. The Universal gave the first Oswald cartoons huge releases, and they were well received by both critics and audiences. Oh What a Night was the 21st Oswald cartoon produced, so by this point they'd been with the character for a while and had grown used to him. The film was directed by Walton Ub, with animation from Ub, Hugh Harmon, and Roland Ham Hamilton. The title is a reference to a popular song from the time. Side note, when I was looking up newspaper articles, I found out that there's a completely different film with the same name that was released the decade before. Because research into silent cinema can't help but be as confusing as possible, I guess. Anyways, the film was released in 1928. A critic for the film Daily praised the cartoon, saying of it, This is one of the cleverest of the Oswald series, and the funny rabbit is handled so amusingly by the cartoonist that it will get laughs from grown-ups as well as the youngsters. The cartoon centers on Oswald in a medieval setting. Based on the hat and accordion he's carrying, maybe he's a bard or something. During his journeys, he ends up at a castle where his girlfriend lives. We'll just be calling her Hortensia for simplicity's sake. He climbs up the tower to greet her, but she's being held captive by Pete playing a villainous knight. Oswald must fight him in order to rescue his girlfriend from certain doom. It's a pretty simple premise, something you see in a lot of cartoons from the era. With no sound, everything has to be readable on screen. Just look at Hortensia when she first comes on. She nervously looks over her shoulder and shakes, but she still smiles at Oswald and waves to him. You don't need any title cards. Her body language speaks for itself. That's the real magic of silent film. Without any music or much dialogue, it's reliant on visuals to get the story across. Doubly so in a medium like animation. But just because the cartoon is simple, doesn't mean it's bad. There are a couple of really clever visuals. The most striking scene in the cartoon is probably the sword fight. There are big dark shadows cast behind them, contrasting with the more simplistic lighting in the rest of the film. It makes the scene more dramatic. This is par for the course nowadays, but back in 1928, it was revolutionary. 
I think a lot of the cartoon's charm comes from that 20s rubber hose animation. You know the cartoon gag where a character walks off a cliff and they don't start falling until they look down? No! Ah! Here's how it happens in this cartoon. I'm sure this isn't the first time that gag has been tried, but it's still cool to see an early version of it. And there's just some neat character animation. Like how Oswald's head launches off his body to avoid the jousting stick. That's so creative, you just don't see this kind of stuff in modern cartoons. And of course, there's Oswald himself. He's just the perfect protagonist. Good natured, but a little mischievous. He's always getting himself into trouble, but finds a way out through his quick wit and, yes, luck. You can see a massive improvement over what they were doing with Julius in the Alice comedies. And I think that's why there's so much affection for Oswald, even all these years later. I mean, when was the last time you saw people clamoring for more piggy stuff? Or more Waffles and Dawn stuff? Flip the Frog and Bimbo were doing a lot of the same things, but you don't see huge fan bases for them like you do for Oswald. Part of that is just the mythos surrounding him. How Disney had him, lost him, and made Mickey afterwards. Another part is that he's just so perfectly endearing for all the reasons mentioned prior. Something that's excellently shown in cartoons like Oh What a Night. It should be noted that Mickey would eventually get his own medieval cartoon, Ye Olden Days, which features quite a few similarities to this one. Like some of the gags and the general premise of putting these characters in medieval settings. However, even though I've seen it called a remake, they're pretty distinct cartoons. Though it is still fun to compare and contrast what Oswald did to what Mickey did a few years later. There isn't much more that needs to be said. Oh What a Night is just an excellent example of the rubber hose style. And for my money, is the definitive Oswald cartoon. If you wanted to introduce the character to someone who'd never heard of him before, this is the cartoon to show them. It exemplifies why people love him and still talk about him almost a hundred years later. So check it out and see what all the hoopla is about. And since I know I'm gonna get asked, my favorite Oswald cartoon is actually one from the Lance era, 1930 Spooks. If you like cartoons that are just weird and funny, I'd recommend it. Leave a comment if you want me to talk about it, even though it isn't a Disney cartoon. And while you're at it, have you seen this cartoon and which one should we cover next? Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.